I'd like to hear some discussion about Xeon D. It seems the perfect processor between socket 1150 and 2011 slash 2013 right now. You get the core count and the optional DDR4 from socket 2011-3 while having the power consumption and pricing similar to a socket 1150. PCI Express Lane count falls between the two platforms, but it has dual 10 gigabit Ethernet, Ethernet controllers to make up for it. The only downside is that the CPU is soldered onto the motherboard. I'd love to see a company like ASUS make a Xeon D board toward, uh, targeted towards consumers. Scott, we're talking about some server processors here for the consumer market, are we not? Yeah, I wrote about them this week, and I guess I guess now I got to talk about them now instead of later in the podcast. <laughs> but that's we, fair. We totally have this on the agenda. Um, this is interesting because uh, I think it's the end of two socket servers as the dominant form factor in in, in most data centers, uh, and that's been the dominant thing for like since I can since I started working with servers. Yeah, long time, long long ago. Um, but uh, this is a, a chip with eight cores. It's Broadwell cores, 14 nanometer, latest Intel tech. It has a ton of stuff integrated on the chip, like the PCI Express lanes, like the memory controller, but but also the 10 gigabit Ethernet. And then it has, like on a companion chip on the same package, it has the South Bridge with the USB and SATA I.O. And, and so what you get is in a really small footprint, you get an entire server <laughs> compute node, right? So... Um, Wow, Jeff, I don't know. Anyway, is that funny? <laughs> no, someone's I, accusing I, me of drinking in the chat. Oh, well, you, are you drinking in the chat? He, he is. I, okay. okay. Well, um, that's way more interesting than sorry. Xeon D. No, I mean, really. <laughs> no. <sighs> it's a Sprite Zero. Oh, okay. Trust. You're off to a good start, new guy. All right, Scott, go ahead. <laughs> no, um, anyway, this is like, I expect, Jordan, that like going forward... In a, a year or two, the tech report would be hosted on one on one of these. We we get our server uh, s servers now from Linode. It's for VMs, virtual machines that are on two P Xeons, like two socket Xeons. I expect they'll go to this because it's eight cores and sixteen threads in one little footprint uh, setup, and it's like low power. Um, I think they top out at forty five watts, and really, hey, here we're getting the Sprite Zero. Um, really, 45 watts is like the more optimal operating point for 14 nanometer Intel chip than the higher end Xeons that have bigger power envelopes. And I think that's fast enough for like if you're Facebook, if you're Google, if you're a web host, if you're doing caching for the web, anything like that, this is your chip now. And so uh, it looks pretty compelling. Um, I didn't get one to test yet. I don't know that I'll have time to do that, but um, this is pretty. I, I just think once the market understands what this is, this will be the Xeon that people buy. Um, there, there are some exceptions like high performance computing and big data, data mining stuff where maybe you really want like big memory machines like the two socket things but one of these I think will have can have up to 128 gigs of memory in it so for most stuff this is going to be all you want um, and it really this looks Jeff this maybe is like a better like workstation desktop chip than a lot of things <laughs> it doesn't really have the uh, the clock speed to, to be super exciting but um, it's what like 2.4 2.4 something gigahertz base and then it goes up from there um, 2.5 2.6 gigahertz peak so probably not quite what you want for that but you can make an interesting like micro ATX system with one of these though you yeah know, you've got enough PCI Express lanes to do one graphics card and you know maybe a decent size SSD um, you know, it would be a, kind of a, I don't think it'll actually happen, but it would be kind of a cool, you know, if they just wanted to make a, a heavyweight knuck, maybe. Yeah. Use one of these. Yeah, it really, and, and, you know, workstations, desktop, like, style corporate workstations that people use for, like, AutoCAD and stuff are traditionally two sockets as well. And, like, no, like, stop. <laughs> like, like, I don't think you need that anymore with, with the amount of memory and the, the, uh, the, the amount of threads and cores and, and the, uh, the amount of I.O. that you can get on one of these. Although, you know, like single socket Haswell E stuff is out there too. 
So I don't know if they want to step on the feet of that. Um, but I don't know. This is really, Jordan, this is kind of funny because it was kind of a quiet thing that Intel did. And um, I think the reason that they went ahead with, this is the first 14 nanometer Xeon. It's an all new chip and a new segment. I think the reason they went ahead with this is they want to head off uh, ARM based server yeah. chips yeah. at the pass and, and the, the, I think the problem that the ARM guys have now is that Intel was like not joking around I think this changes the market for Xeon for them in a dramatic way um, but it positions them way better to compete with the ARM guys who were going to come in and compete on cost and power and now they have to do that against this thing which is kind of a killer so um, that's my take without having tested it um, but it just looks like it has all the right pieces. And it also, interestingly, has this dual-mode memory controller that can do DDR3 or DDR4 memory, which mm -hmm. probably tells us a little bit about what Intel's next-gen desktop processor may have in the memory department. Yeah. It seems kind of likely that they would do a, a split configuration to take advantage of the availability of DDR3 and the lower prices, but also have the option of doing faster DDR4. And we now know they have that already baked, right? Yeah. They, and they shipped it in 14 nanometer. So, yeah. There you go.